go, and Haley Van Lith is a more efficient player, a more unselfish player, and that's showing up big time for Louisville. Set for tip, Louisville in their gray jerseys to making their debut this season. The Wolfpack in black on the road. How about these tilted tips? Everybody on one side yeah. of the floor. And Louisville will start out with it. Here is Van Lith. Then the left-hander pulls up at the elbow and a foul immediately scrapping for the rebound. Both coaches told us how important rebounding was in this game, including this morning when we were talking to Jeff Walls. The first thing he mentioned, well, after taking care of the basketball. Coming off a fourth trip to the Final Four last year, he is the winningest coach in Louisville history with a nice contract extension through the 2029 season. screen and tried to drop it off for Liz Dixon and they'll turn it over. On the other side now in his 10th season at NC State is Wes Moore. A trip to the Elite Eight last year for the first time since 1998 as they celebrate the 25th anniversary of their Final Four team this year. They were oh so close, lost in overtime a year ago to Connecticut in the region final. Diamond Johnson is good. Both teams starting out in man-to-man -man and a really hard, hard hedge on the on-ball screen by Louisville. So if you're the smaller Johnson, you're going to have to be able to find that pass out of it. The Louisville starting five car is a deep threat. And Morgan Jones is one to watch. When she's on, this is a totally different team. The runner from Van Lith won't go. Johnson has the rebound. Look at the pack. As Johnson hits from three-point range, Collins gets the start today. They'll bring Jada Boyd off the bench as she returns from an injury. We talked in the open about how important it is for Diamond Johnson to be efficient with her scoring. Great sign for NC State for her to hit that one early. Olivia Conklin, and here is Kristen Carr off the bounce. Around and out. Camille Hobby with the rebound. Johnson. She too has missed time. Four games this year with an ankle injury. Trying to get back to 100%. Madison Hayes off the bounce to the right side and a terrific start for the Wolfpack here on the road. This is not an easy place to come in and play as the visiting team and it is a terrific start for NC State. Both these teams coming off the wins on Thursday. Really nice job by Carr. Her defender got caught on the on-ball screen. She went left. Got an easy two. A 5-5 five, five on 5-5 five, five point guard action today. <laughs> Good matchup out top. Johnson gets it back. They gave her an open look. Rattles it in and out. And Louisville will look to push. Carr off the hesitation. Stuck her foot in the ground. And Johnson with another rebound. defending is going to be really important for Diamond Johnson to make the right decisions here. Hard hedge, two coming at her. Finds the shooter in the corner. We'll continue to see Louisville send those defenses and traps and hedges at her in the on-ball action. She's got to make the right read, and she did there. Jones to Carr. And now Van Lift gets a touch. Finds some space. Nice drop off inside. Cochran missed the gimme, and it will go the other way. The situation for both these clubs, this, this is uncharted territory this year. Both a bit frustrated with the, their records so far. These are two teams used to being atop the ACC, used to being in the top ten, and neither finds themselves.
themselves there this year, Rebecca. Both frustrated by some losses to unranked opponents this season and trying to fight through all of that to get back on track. Well, NC State lost four or five starters. Louisville lost some really important pieces, including Emily Engsler, which was, who was their heartbeat of their team a season ago, are trying to integrate transfers in their first year at their program. So losses we're not accustomed to. Both already have lost more than they did all of last year. So, a gut check already here in mid-January and another turnover. Holly? Well, you're talking about the new players to this program, and Olivia Cochran, who's been here for two years, said, you know, we're trying to teach them the Louisville way, and, and I asked them, what does that mean? Haley Venless said, it's hard nose, it's in your face, it's always trying to win. We're not used to, used to losing around here. And when I asked CC Chris Lynn Carr about it, she said, what I've learned, it's a higher level of intensity of any place I've ever been. The expectations are high, but you better bring intensity every single day. That's the Louisville way. And it's not just intensity on game day. It's intensity every single day and practice, shoot around, whatever. Boyd, who has checked into the game, back to Johnson and DJ with her second does not like the defense on that possession and a 10-2 state lead. NC State, in particular Diamond Johnson, making good decisions early in this game. When to shoot, when to pass, stepping into the three in transition and then on the drive and kick, nailing that one as well. Great start by the Wolfpack. Your record label is taking off. Attack were supposed to be the favorites in the preseason, but it's been topsy-turvy. And here's a look at the most top 10 wins by conference. Eight of them for ACC schools to lead the country. And uh, there's been parity all around the country, really. Rebecca, outside of maybe the three unbeatens right now in Ohio State, LSU, and South Carolina. Especially now that we've gotten into conference play and things tend to get tight anyway. You're seeing a lot more competitive games and, yes, teams that might normally be at the bottom of the standings beating some of the top teams. Holly Louisville, one for eight shooting so far. Yeah, Jeff Walls called that timeout and he really got on his team, particularly Chris Lynn Carr, about defending Diamond Johnson. He said, you're giving her too much space. She's going to pull up on you and hit 25 if you don't get up in her space more. But offensively, he's frustrated by all the outside shots. Now one for nine. He said, we haven't gotten it into the post yet. He's like, I want us to push and I want us to get it into the post. And when he said that, he made everybody in the huddle repeat, speak after me, push, push it up the floor. He wants more inside looks because they're not hitting from downtown. In order to push, they have to get stops and right now NC State shooting 80 percent and when they've turned it over it's been dead ball turnovers. Now Diamond Johnson with a couple of three-pointers almost got a pick there did Jones. Sonia Rivers now into the ball game pulls up from the short corner that won't go and here they come on the run looking for an easy bucket to get them going. And Carr time they got a stop they pushed it out in transition and then the secondary went in and back out and got a good look from three sometimes coaches know what they're talking about <laughs> as long as the players execute right there you go Carr is the top three-point shooter in the country so they'd love to get her heating up rivers and her first year at nc state the transfer from south carolina Shot clock winding down. Johnson kicks it out to Rivers. Deep three hand in her face, and she got it. Sanaya Rivers coming into this game. Eight of 38 from three. That's the area of her game where she can really grow, but that one certainly looked good. <laughs> 13 to five. Wolfpack. Carr, another good look. And back to back for Chrislin really good possessions for Louisville and even the previous one where they didn't weren't able to score more people touching the basketball changing sides of the floor car a good grad school pickup for Louisville from Syracuse a year ago Boyd able to knock it down they need if they're going to make a push for a title they need Boyd and Johnson and Jakia Brown Turner really the big three in their starting lineup to get it going they only have one digit score around the season and that's diamond jones off the mark they are big monday ac 
ACC Big 12 doubleheader on ESPN features Duke Virginia Tech at 7 o'clock, followed by Kansas Baylor at 9 Eastern. That's on the men's side Monday night on ESPN. Holly? Well, guys, Kansas coming off a back-to-back -back loss in the last week. That is not very normal against a Bill Self team. And that Kansas-Baylor game, I know Jay Billis has the game, and that is going to be a barn burner in Baylor on Monday night. We have a terrific women's game as well tomorrow night as Boyd hits the open three. As long as Magnolia Farms doesn't burn, Holly, I think we're good. <laughs> How about NC State from three so far in this game? Four of five. Ten point advantage. Louisville rarely loses at home. Ohio State did come in here earlier in the nine conference and beat them. Good box out. Isaiah James, a player that Wes Moore would like to get some more minutes for today. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. If you had seen the game, NC State playing Florida State, maybe two weeks ago, it looked like a completely different team than yeah. what we're seeing here in this first quarter. They were forcing shots. They weren't strong defensively. Today, the opposite of that. Hobby spins away from the double team and draws the foul. That's going to be on Josie Williams, a grad transfer from Utah Valley. As Hobby goes to the line. Holly? Well, guys, it's a big day for Camille Hobby and her family. Her dad, Marion Hobby, is the coach for the Cincinnati Bengals, and they're playing in a big, pretty big NFL playoff game. But the awkward thing is her assistant coach on her team, Nikki West, her husband is a defensive coach for the Bills. So there's a lot of angst with this team on who's going to play in that game and win the game at 3 p.m., a really cool NFL connection for the Wolfpack. Yeah, they start off the doubleheader coming up uh, in a couple hours. The block by Hobby right on cue. Swatch that one. Great help defense from Hobby to come over from the weak side and get that block. Sees it, sees it. As soon as you see the players dribbling, that's when you can come and, and, and double team, and it's not going to burn you. It is a terrific defensive effort. Haley Van Lith hasn't scored. In fact, Chrislyn Carr is the only Cardinal with points here in the first quarter. And Louisville shooting around 20% so far today. NC State doing an outstanding job cleaning the glass, and it's an entire team effort. Diamond Johnson now, the smallest player on the floor for NC State, has four boards. Well, you, you referenced it. If Johnson and Boyd can get back to 100% healthy, this is a different club. Here's Rivers, under 10 on the shot clock, and that's going to be another foul on Williams as Hobby continues to work hard inside. You know if you're defending against NC State and you're a big that you have your work cut out for you that day because they run so much four around one, and that one inside is going to post up strong and work hard, and you are, have to be ready to bang when you're playing against NC State post players. I'll be getting a lot more minutes with the graduation of Alyssa Cunane off to the WNBA from a year ago. Final minute of this first quarter. And not the way Louisville had uh, planned to start this one today. Carr the only one with a basket. Everybody else is over. And here is Carr looking for more. She'll try for three and hit it. That's her third of the day. She was boxed in, too. She was not going to be able to get out of that left corner, so she's like, all right, I'll just shoot it. What a start for Carl. On a two-second difference, shot and game clock. And there is a turnover to get it back to the Cardinal. They can take the last shot if they want. Yes, 
Jeff Wallace is going to cross something for Crystal Carr right here. <laughs> Syracuse education at work right there. In some way, shape, or form, here she comes, flashing to the top. Robinson doesn't give it to her, has to drive, and knocks it down. The only non-car basket of the quarter for Louisville. And it's a six-point game. Another three. Or actually was moved to tears today when he told us about Pat Summit playing him every year at Chattanooga. They moved into the big gym, helped him start a program, and he is where he is today because of the generosity of spirit and leadership of Pat Summit. Yeah, we will hear uh, from some of Pat's you know, former players today. Obviously, the impact on all the student athletes, but also the coaches around the country uh, who she helped and who she encouraged and supported along the way. And Wes, certainly one of those in, in the state of Tennessee when he was there uh, before coming here to NC State. Passed away in 2016, but she and her son Tyler started the Pat Summit Foundation. 21 to 13, our score here, NC State over Louisville. Crystal Carr has been the star Great shot by Carb earlier in the possession when Olivia Cochran had the post player on her back. Give her the ball. Let's share the ball a little bit. I mean, she bailed them out at the end of the possession, but Cochran had the positioning. Carr, four triples. She's got 14 of their 16 points so far. More balanced attack for the pack. And Boyd will be called for the offensive foul. Great job defensively there by Cochran, moving her feet. This is a big player with a big frame, but she's got really good and quick feet and gets there to take the charge. One of the big things for Louisville as they try and fight their way back into this one, they trailed by double digits, is to win the turnover battle. Turnovers have been a huge problem for them. They had 21 the other night, even though they did pick up a win. And Jeff Walls has been really stressing taking better care of the basketball. Here is Carr. And it's going to be a blocking foul called on State. Got a big one coming your way. Uh, the great rivalry. Well, the dates back to the early 90s. UConn and Tennessee from Knoxville on Thursday. College game day for the women. We'll be there starting at 7 Eastern. And then the tip from Tennessee at 8 o'clock. Big Thursday night showcase coming your way on ESPN. Let's get a sold out Thompson Bowling yes. arena for that. What do you think? George you Horston been playing really well for Tennessee. Aaliyah Edwards been playing terrific for Connecticut. You know, the uh, national championships, the wins, the way they elevated not only their games, but everybody else's games over the years. UConn will head into that, by the way. Winners of 10 in a row. Tennessee, eight straight going into their game this afternoon. Go out of bounds off the of Cochran. advantage of the mismatch inside and Collins with the miss. But I like her vision. And she, a couple possessions ago, she had the beautiful backdoor pass to Jada Boyd over the top. And this time, she's looking inside to her big. She's got good size from the perimeter to be able to see and make those passes. Little five-man weave right now for Louisville, and they'll turn it over. Interesting decision, too, here for Jeff Walls. He's got Haley Van Litha on the bench to open up this second quarter. And this is a young lady who, who is accustomed to playing the full 40 minutes, but off to a bit of a slow start here offensively. She's missed her first four shots of the day. And I, th I felt like she was forcing a little bit at the beginning of this game. Understandable, you have a huge crowd. It's a, it's a huge game on ABC. And sometimes you just need to sit down and kind of have a chance to reset. 
corner. Maybe wants to give her a chance here to just catch her breath and, and like you said, hit that reset button. And meanwhile, NC State continues to shoot it with the hot hand. This big for the Wolfpack here in the last couple of weeks have really struggled to score. They've lost four of their last seven games and are trying to fight their way back into ACC contention for Wes Moore. He pulled off the double last year, winning the regular season and the ACC tournament title. That postseason crown, their third in a row. Kono picking up more minutes of late. Off the mark there, but Louisville will keep it. Walls, who has guided the Cardinals to four straight years of either an Elite Eight or a Final Four trip. They're still trying to figure out the chemistry and the culture of this group. But you only got about ten games left to go. So you're saying they better figure it out soon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, just when I said they were doing a good job taking care of the ball, they turn it over for the second time in a row, and here comes... HVL off the bench. And at least that one was a dead ball turnover. It's not leading to a break the other way. Morgan Jones will also come on. Ideally, they would love to get some transition opportunities for Morgan to try and heat her up a bit. Robinson, one of the best defenders in the country, drops it off for Jones, and there you go. There's a fast break bucket for Jones. End to end, credit Mikasa Robinson. She's giving up inches when she's defending in the post. She gets the stop and makes the perfect decision the other way. I'll fire up the crowd a little bit as well. the most of it. Let's see how Van Lith responds here now. Back onto the court. Number 10 in gray. Cochran off the bounce. They isolated her. Missed the layup. Yeah, they cleared out the right side of the floor so she could drive. Kick out to Brown Turner. That won't go. Cochran with the board. Robinson head up, looking for a shooter. She's got one. Van Lith off the bounce. Knocked away, and here comes Rivers. Four on three. NC State. Collins running the floor, and they'll give it right back. And now a break for Louisville. Van Lith pull up. Good, and Haley is finally off the schneid. Haley Van Lith got the space she needed for that shot with her eyes. She looked to her teammate running to the right side. That made the defense step back, able to drop the shot. Wes Moore doesn't like the turn of events here. He wants to get Diamond Johnson back on the floor. She's set to check in. Hayes, strong drive to the 10 for the lay-in. starter for the Wolfpack after transferring in from Mississippi State last year. Jones, Euros into the paint for the lefty land. Brown Turner, strong switch defensively from Van Lith. Able to knock it loose. Here comes Jones, working on the Rivers. Got it!
coming up on this halftime report. We'll get you ready for the Arkansas-South Carolina game coming your way on ESPN2 in a little while. But right now, Drea, what are you seeing from NC State? Well, they've got terrific balance. Seven players have scored. Big lift from Jada Boyd off the bench. But they have got to take care of the basketball. Six turnovers so far. In that first quarter for Louisville, the only person that was scoring was Chris Carr. Now they're getting contributions and they're getting it off their defense. Turning NC State over and then getting the quick basket. Looks like it was going to be Chris Carr against the world, but that has changed, guys. <laughs> yeah, what well, was once an 11-point lead uh, has been uh, sliced and diced by Louisville. As you check out the numbers, Diamond Johnson, six points, four rebounds, and three assists. A well-rounded afternoon so far for the NC State point. You know, you heard Holly give the report in the first quarter about Jeff Wall saying we need to get out and transition and push pace. So what's been the difference in the last three possessions for Louisville? Getting out in transition and pushing pace <laughs> and, and an ability to score in that way. Haley Van Lith in transition. We saw Robinson coming down in transition and then this last great play by Morgan Jones. Beth Mullins, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe with you this afternoon here at the KFC Yum Center in Louisville where night in and night out some of the best crowds in all of college basketball in the house to watch Louisville play. And uh, this has developed into a really good rivalry in the ACC the last few seasons. Both these teams in contention uh, for ACC regular season and tournament titles. Both teams right now, though, looking up at Duke and Notre Dame, the top two right now in the ACC. Of course, that's been a big story around college basketball, the parity everywhere, whether it's the SEC or the Pac-12 or the Big 12. Camille Hobby. Oh, nice move to the left. Ooh. I don't think that was a travel. I thought that was a beautiful move. She held the ball a second to let the help side defense get out of there, and then it was a spin. Let's see. Oh, no, I don't think so. I think that was a beautiful post move. So quick, she faked out the event. <laughs> and lift checked by Rivers. Tries to step through. Sanaya with those long arms, able to bother the shot. Rivers is another player emerging as a defensive player of the year candidate. Had eight steals in one game this year. That's the most in 25 years at NC State. Good fight for position inside. And that'll force another turnover. Foot race, Carr and Johnson. And Chrisman missed the layup. Van Lith tries to clean it up. Big break for NC State to get away there without a scar. Give Diamond Johnson credit for the hustle she showed to get back in transition. Johnson looking for three. And we're going to get a foul on Robinson on the box out here for Louisville. That'll be her first. When you're watching games and Sanaya Rivers is on the floor, you can't help but have your eyes go to her. It happened last year when South Carolina would play, and she'd come in off the bench. And I've just been so impressed with her here today as well. Great block by Jones. Her length and size defensively has yeah. given Louisville and Haley Van Lith problems. Here she is defending, forcing Van Lith to give it up. Jones hits the mid-range. today in the first half. 
This Kitley with 12 of her team's 30 points already in the second quarter of that game. It'll be interesting to see because Duke is not, doesn't have a ton of size inside. And can Virginia Tech take advantage of that with Kitley? James, no. And that's going to be a foul on Camille Hobby. Picasso Robinson, though, just boxing out Hobby and getting the foul called. Picasso Robinson, 5'7". She just battles and battles and battles and gets a foul on the big as a result. Well, Mikasa Robinson was honored before the game. She has just set the new program record for games played at 145. And Jeff Walls calls her one of the most passionate players that he has ever coached, particularly here at Louisville. She is giving it all every single possession. She makes such a difference, even though she's not a big scorer. And uh, just love Mikasa Robinson, what she's done here at Louisville. Yeah, big reason why they were at the Final Four a year ago. And a big reason why they've been able to claw their way back into this and tie it up. To the first half. Collins flat on the three, but knocked it down. Last possession. Haley Van Lith able to get her shot off. No coincidence. Sanaya Rivers out of the game, not defending her on that one. Mimi Collins now with seven points for NC State. She and Boyd leading scores here in the first half. Working their way inside into the lane. Nyla Harris, the freshman out of Windermere, Florida with the bucket. A nice pass by Nakasa Robinson and the steal. Got the lay in off the takeaway and Louisville has the lead. It's their first of the day. Just make two of them about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, <laughs> Man, that kid is so much heart and tenacity and everything else that just doesn't involve scoring. She does everything else. All right, let's see what they draw up here in the final six seconds of the first half. <laughs> Westmore substitution to get uh, some... Some more speed onto the floor with Brown Turner. And I think they're looking to see if uh, that was a shot clock violation first. And when, how much time should be on the clock? When you were speaking with the officials before the game, you told them they were allowed two monitor <laughs> reviews. Isn't that correct? I, I, yes. That's yes. what like, you told them. I, I think that the NCAA should consider it uh, and, you know, we it's like a challenge in the NBA. You yeah. get a certain amount of them. <laughs> I kind of like that idea. We're, we're always encouraging them to make sure they get it right. And it looks like the time will stay at 5.9 for Billy Smith, Joe Vasily, and my Forsberg today. Really good crew. It's Robinson, double teamed, Mikasa coast to coast, and she's bumped with 1.5 to go. Louisville is in the bonus, so two free throws coming. How can you not love this kid? You know, she just plays so darn hard, so smart. 
It looks like she's having a blast doing it. 85% free throw shooter as well. An area of her game where she has really, really worked. First four seasons here, 53% for the line, but this year much better. She gets one to make it a two-point game. One and a half seconds, still some time for the pack to work with. I was balancing your announcer, Jinx. On that, that I, yeah, I was not taking credit for that. And NC State will just take it and hold it. Louisville overcoming an 11-point deficit, and they have the lead into the locker room. Over 20th ranked NC State. How do you only score five points and a half but completely impact the game? Well, let's look at the last minute or two from Mikasa Robinson. A perfect pass to a teammate so she can get a job on scouting report defense, take care of the basketball, and they're right back in this thing. Nine first-half turnovers, Holly. It was a real problem for NC State. They usually take good care of the basketball, too. Only 13 per game on the season. Duke a winner over Syracuse just a few moments ago, so they remain in first place, a half a game up on Notre Dame, a game up on Louisville. As NC State scores to open up the second half. Sometimes you just got to keep it simple. Yep. Dribble handoff, let her go to her strong left and pull up. This is a big 20 minutes coming up here for North Carolina State. A loss would drop them a full four games out of first place with only nine left to play. It's going to be a great finish to the ACC regular season. They all still have games against each other. As Baville scores in the paint and their first points from either of their post players. And Olivia Cochran, that play was designed for her. She got great position on the right block and then chose not to go up and score. Over the last five years, these have been the two dominant teams, regular season and ACC tournament championships. Haley Van Lith, who was just two of eight shooting in that first half. Carr carried a lot of the load with 14 points on four triples. So this is a car carrier? A car carrier, that there is correct. Go. Nice. All six of her points in the first quarter, none in the second for Diamond. Tough shot, good defense by Carr to force that from Hayes. Kristen with the push, Van Lith pulls up mid-range. Nope, they'll get another opportunity. A third one coming, Morgan Jones around and out. Trying to get a fourth. And a held ball will stay at this end. The first play of the second half was designed for back screen for Olivia Cochran to get the ball, and she had position, but then kind of gave up position. But there you see Dixon getting the offensive board and put back. Sonia Rivers will quickly check in for NC State. Number 22 in black. A player that is starting to pick up more and more significant minutes for the Wolfpack. And here she is defending Van Lith. Cochran and Dixon, the two bigs out there on the floor right now for Louisville. Shot clock winding down. Jones contested and she's fouled by Hobby. That was such a bailout because it was great defense by Diamond Johnson fighting over screens, not get, letting Carr get anything easy. And then that mid-range jumper, that's not Jones's bread and butter. You got to let her take that without giving the officials a chance to make the call. Morgan Jones, the All-American transfer from Florida State who would uh, like to work in an NBA front office one day, our hoop scoop. this era of transfers, Rebecca, sometimes coaches, you know, you love the experience, you love the leadership you can provide, but there is also still a learning curve to a culture and a chemistry. And like we talked about earlier with Holly, 
what it takes to play here at Louisville, and that's hard effort every day for players like Morgan. Well, she's a young woman who has a really high ceiling. She's a terrific athlete, excellent when she puts the ball on the floor, driving. But there's areas of her game that still have a lot of room for improvement. Rivers off the bounce, and one for Sanaya. Dripping with talent. This young woman is dripping with potential and talent. And we've seen she's done a great job today defensively, but attacks. She's got such good size and vision, so when she's handling the ball up top, she can see open players deliver the ball. That time she was unbothered by the defense because she could see right over them. Three-point play, Holly. Well, you guys have heard it before, but Sanaya Rivers went to the same high school as Michael Jordan. She has that legacy, but she's, you know, really getting into her, her own career. She didn't play a ton for South Carolina last year, saw that it was going to be hard for her to get on the floor. And she's really proud of her mid-range game, her pull-up game. And she said, even my three is getting better. But uh, her sister had gone to NC State. NC State was in her final five as a recruiting school. And now here she is, closer to home from Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, throws a dart. On the run, Collins couldn't finish. Beautiful Great pass. look from Sanaya. And her head is up the whole time, and it's on a swivel. And she's not necessarily a natural point guard, but she, she's playing the position really well. Can she be the uh, third straight ACC sixth player of the year? Boyd and Johnson the last two seasons for NC State. Although if she keeps this up, she may be moving into the starting lineup soon. Akron with a rebound. Casa Robinson's over there jumping up and down, not literally, but saying, what about me? Sixth player of the year, what about me? <laughs> she looked uh, all of that more in that second quarter when Louisville came back from 11 points down. Cochran barely got a piece of the room there. Rivers, battled away by Cochran. Oh, she needed to throw that up just a little higher. Pull up car, good. Kristen Clark came to play today. That's for darn sure. And a Davenport, Iowa. Such a good three-point shooter. You got to get step out to respect it, and she's been working off the bounce too today. To the rim and one basket and a foul for Jada Boyd, looking for her tenth point of the day. Just smart, unselfish basketball right here. Good pass, fake. Yeah, you get the big shot blocker off her feet, and then you go to the bucket. Really well done, Jada Boy. You know what shot blockers do? They block shots, and when you pump fake, they jump to block the shot, and then you go by. That was a big stress point for Jeff Walls this week. Ball fakes, shot fakes. They weren't sure how much Jada Boyd would actually be able to play today as she tried to shake off that injury that she's fighting through that ankle. But coach said she picked up two fouls early in the game. She sat on the bench a little bit, but she was one of their best scorers early in this game, really fighting through it right now. But they're getting more minutes out of her than I, I think they anticipated. Good look inside to Liz Dixon. And Holly Boyd's ankle looks fine to very fine. She has not looked encumbered by him at all. Another good set, getting a, a post touch inside. Well, that would be so significant for the Wolfpack because Boyd and Johnson have been struggling to get back to form off the injuries. So There's a play at the Just other a end. great job by Dixon rolling to the basket, sets the screen, defense gets caught up a little bit. Good finish. We didn't see a lot of post touches in the first half of this game for Louisville. Continues down under. It's round 16 of the Aussie Open. Can Tommy Paul or any of the other Americans make an even deeper push? Round of 16 tonight. If you stay up late, 3 a.m. Eastern, you can see Novak Djokovic in action this evening. Slash tomorrow morning. Johnson airball. Going to hear it from the crowd. Really good job switching sides of the floor. And then Mimi Collins had Mikasa Robinson on her back, which is a great mismatch for her in terms of size. And they didn't get the ball inside. I'm on that kick a little bit today. Post players with the defender on get the back, man. Give him a touch. Because <laughs> well, so much of your three-point game can also come yes. off with a kick out, right? Yes. Here's Jones, 17-footer. 
and neither side is getting good looks right now in their offensive sets. So that's a good time for a timeout. Under five to go here in the third, a two-point game. separated themselves, but how about the job for Kim Mulkey at LSU and Kevin McGuff at Ohio State also at 19 and 0 on the season. It's going to be a fun coach of the year vote Ooh, at the end yeah. of the year. Got a good game tomorrow night as well, by the way. Undefeated Ohio State, the aforementioned, and uh, Caitlin Clark and it's a great week for women's hoops. Full court press out of the timeout here for Louisville. Going to test the ball handlers. So Morgan Jones immediately, they get a turnover. Van Lith, open three. Boyd has the board. Both sides have come out a little chilly. Uh, shooting the basketball here in the third. Both hovering around 30%. And Van Lift defending on Collins inside. They get Mimi the touch, and she'll go to work. Gets to the left side, and Van Lift comes away with it. Nice job battling, and great job by NC State clearing out the side once she did get the ball inside. Van Lith off the Robinson screen, and Mikasa tracks down the rebound. Haley now just two for 10 in the ball game, but Louisville's still up a bucket. Two for 11 now after that last shot. Diamond Johnson got her hand in there to knock it loose. It's gonna stay here. Are they gonna call the shot clock violation or are they gonna have to look? really good defense by Diamond Johnson to know that when Louisville does that elbow entry and sets the screen, it's for the player with the basketball to drive to the basket, and she knew that and was able to dig right in on it. So we're going to check here and see if it's a violation. So elbow entry, screen comes, and Diamond Johnson knows she's going to... She's going to go with it. I know you guys are looking at the clock. I'm looking at the play. And so she comes in and is able to dig on it. As it trickled out of bounds, there may be a tenth or two left. Back in a moment. Already. Charlie Cream's bracketology is out at ESPN.com. ACC, Pac-12, and SCC right now projected to get eight teams in. And your top seed line would be South Carolina, Ohio State, Indiana, and Stanford. When my kids were little, they used to like to do like arts and crafts projects where they cut out a picture or something and put it on the end of a pipe cleaner. And it would oh, like, yeah. that's yeah. what that graphic looked like. <laughs> As it was like undul cool. undulating back and forth. <laughs> well done, graphics crew. So the uh, top 16 seeds will still host first and second round action. But then half the field will go to Greenville, and half the field will head to Seattle. So you wanted to bring it back to basketball? I know what you're saying. <laughs> Get out your pipe cleaners. <laughs> they did put uh, five tenths back on the clock for Louisville, and then Louisville uh, hurried that one and turned it over. Robinson was wide open, though. Yeah. She was wide open. She could have, like, catched and, you know, shot that, shot, put that thing up there in time. So a missed opportunity. Well, shot clock violation now. We'll give it to the Wolfpack. It's a long bit of time for the same result, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that 
last uh, five minutes of our lives we'd like to have back. <laughs> Rivers is also, by the way, uh, running a little more point in terms of uh, getting them into their offensive sets. Johnson, good ball fake, and the bucket. That was a phenomenal ball fake because Carr went for it completely. Got the flyby. Not even at 41. We're trying to get Harris down on the low block. We talked about shot blockers like to block shots, and so they'll take pump fakes. Well, even five-five guards like to block shots or contest them, and that was just a beautiful fake and escape dribble by Diamond Johnson. When her counterpart's five-five, Crystal knew that this is my one shot at a block right here. That's true. That's true. Diamond had other ideas. Here are the two speedsters out top. Johnson gets it back. Last year's ACC sixth player of the year leads NC State in both scoring and assists. That's Diamond Johnson. Van Lith pulls up. See if that helps her confidence. Collins faces up. Good post inside. Boyd basket and an injured player down for Louisville. Robinson may have taken a shot, uh, taken a shot to the nose. On the spin. I think yeah. the officials are going to have to look to see if this is a flagrant elbow here. I don't think it's a flagrant. It's a swim move. When you, you'll watch, Boyd comes across the swim move there, and she got her. She got her in the face. I don't think there's anything that is unsportsmanlike about it. So they'll look to see if it's intentional. And wow, Jeff Walls is hot right now. The players are holding him back a little bit. He's giving Joe Vasily an earful. Again, so this is what's called a swim move. If you're coming across the body of your defender. Is this unnecessary? Is this an intentional foul as, as unnecessary? <laughs> Officials want to get a, a third opinion here. As it stands, basket uh, four. NC State and Jada Boyd, who now has 12 points. So there we see Robinson go down. This one, it doesn't. On that one, it doesn't look like she gets hit. Yeah. I'm not saying she didn't. Must I'm saying on that coffee. angle, we yeah. just saw it doesn't look like she gets her. But it's not my nose. That is a good point. Robinson does appear to be okay. She Still trying to shake it off a little bit. An athletic trainer making sure there's nothing more to it. We're going to have one more angle, and you can see it on this one. Same thing as swim move. Watch the elbow right here. She gets her in the yep. nose right there. Yep. But again, it's not a punch. It's not a flail. It's like it's a move that you yeah. use to try to get open. So I think you could have called a common foul on it. I don't know that it rises to the level of an intentional.
looks like the officials are ready to inform the coaches of what's going on. Is this one of the games where they put the headphone on? Oh. So they will count the basket. And then I think I, we heard her say two free throws coming up here for Louisville. So Haley Van Lift will take the free throws here. Forceful contact to the face with the elbow. So that's why it was up there. And that's the call on Boyd. And that's fair. I wouldn't want forceful contact no. to my face no. with an elbow. So it ends up being a push on the scoreboard. Move it back up by a pair. Robinson stays on the floor. Here she is, number five. Rivers that time, it looked like she uh, let the lefty go to the left. And Sanaya off the bounce, going to work. Gets inside, basket and a foul. Rivers with the big response. A little back and forth and forth and back and here. Van Lith on Rivers, and she's up on her, but yes, you're right. Let's her go left. Nice little shoulder shake to get there. And on the other end, Sanaya Rivers using her handle, her length, her speed to get inside the paint. Second on Van Lith. Boy, and Sanaya Rivers developing into a go-to player before our eyes here the last couple of ball games for NC State. to Jones, stripped by Diamond Johnson. Diamond on the run. Jones giving chase and is able to knock it loose. Good for her. Good for her because when she turned the basketball over, you could see Jeff Walls kind of drop his head a little bit in frustrations and she just works. Look at her. This is a sprinting down the floor. Sprint, sprint. And able to tip the ball away. Nice effort, young lady. Boyd. Rebounded by Robinson. Final minute of the third. Robinson missed it. Man, how many missed layups by Louisville today? Give your big girl a look. Oh, Camille. You couldn't get it to her. And a foul going to be called on Louisville and on Jones. Now when Boyd first caught the ball in the high post, Hobby ducked in. That right there, that was your moment. You had to give her the basketball. Boyd not a high assist player. Camille is yet to attempt a shot today. Their starting center. Ooh, and a blocking foul gonna be called on Cochran.
You just can't help yourself. I don't have that kind of power. I wish I did, folks. Substitution. Dixon will come on for Louisville. Conklin out. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds to go. Madison Hayes will check in for NC State. Out goes Boyd. Kristen Carr has been their best creator so far in this game. Typically, the ball will go to Haley Van Lith in these late moments, but looking at Carr. Carr will step back. Jones looking for Van Lith, who flashes to the lane. They turn her away. Blocked by Hobby. Good defense from NC State. Good zone defense from NC State on that one possession. One point as we get set to head to the fourth. Haley Van Lith coming alive a little bit here in the third quarter. They're going to need all of what she can provide. Out plays. They want some cleaner looks. But protecting the basketball, their priority here in the fourth. One point game, 10 minutes to go. Louisville trying to hang a game out of first place in the ACC. NC State trying to avoid falling four games back. With time running down, only 10 games or so left on the schedules around the country. Great job by Hayes to keep her feet planted. Even though her body went down, she was able to get back up because her feet stayed planted the whole time. Here's how we got here. At one point, NC State was up 11 in the first half. Jada Boyd leading the way with 13. Three players in double digits for Louisville, Carr, Van Lith, and Morgan Jones. Two players to watch, though, are the stud defenders. Sanaya Rivers, 22 in black. Mikasa Robinson, number five in gray. Could be game changers here in the fourth quarter. Diamond Johnson off the bounce, rattles it in. Wow, what a beautiful hesitation move going left and then the floater. If you're 5'5", five, five, you better have a floater. And with the Johnson defending her. Pulls up. Good bother by Diamond Johnson. And it's NC State basketball. Last possession, Diamond Johnson with the basketball on the perimeter. And just you see, she's going to look, go, hezzy, and then goes right by. Beautifully done. NC State has won the last three games in this series, including a monster fourth quarter last year to beat Louisville en route to the regular season championship. It's going to go back to Louisville. Well, your shot selection and getting the ball into the hands of your decision makers so critical. Rivers checking Van Lith. Jones off the bounce to the right side. Can't get it to go, but a trip to the free throw line. It's where Morgan Jones excels. Not only putting the ball on the deck and taking it in the paint, but especially when she could go to her strong right hand. That's the second on Jakia Brown Turner. And Jones to the line, 72%. Afternoon 
so far. Here is Jakia looking for the three. Hobby scrapping for the rebound. She's got it. Spins to the baseline and took an extra step. Westmore looking at her saying, pass the ball. She was surrounded by two or three bodies. It's on her teammates a little bit too. Make themselves available, call her name so she has an easy pass out of it. How? By getting out and running. There's an easy bucket. Getting out and running again. Hayes doing a great job just beating everybody down the floor. Robinson commits her second foul. So Hayes, a 74% shooter, will toe the line. They have not been a terrific free throw shooting team this year. 11th in the ACC as a group. This is the 10th year that Wes Moore has been in Raleigh and under his watch they have not lost three straight ACC road games. Now they've dropped their last two coming in here. Them out there. Van Lith on the drive around and out. Louisville now 0 for 5 here in the fourth quarter. I think Louisville likes that possession. You get the switch you want because you get a smaller Johnson on Haley Van Lith. You get her going to her strong left side, just not able to convert. Van Lith comes back out top to get it. Good fake. 0 for 6 now to start the fourth quarter for the Ville. Wolfpack have runners on the break. Johnson will take her time. Over the horn set. Defense! 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 Johnson thought about it. She's got a big on her defensively. Somebody's got to help her out. Five on the shot clock. Hayes. Back to Johnson. Deep three. And Brown Turner able to track it down. Mimi Collins had the post up on Haley Van Lith, but the shot clock was going down. They couldn't get it there, and then they finally saw it able to deliver. Wolf pack up six. Van Lith three. Still searching for their first field goal of the quarter. Approaching the midway point. Johnson, oh, nice head fake. And convert. Yeah, you got to give it to Brown Turner in the corner on that one. Left corner was there. Crowd getting antsy. Held ball will stay here with Louisville. And a chance for Jeff Wells to get Louisville together. They find themselves down here in the fourth. Diamond Johnson, 10 points on the day, but she also has six assists. Beautiful right-handed 
dime to Mimi Collins inside. Mouse in the house, a post player with a guard on. At six. Update for you as Leah Boston and number one South Carolina get ready to take on Arkansas. That game coming your way on ESPN2 at the top of the hour. If it, the Memphis Cincinnati men's game, if it goes over, this game will start on E News. What do they do to stop Leah Boston? Well, it has been hard. No one's been able to stop her. Maybe double teamer, triple teamer, quadruple teamer. Hit threes. Don't worry about teaming her. <laughs> Guys, back to you. <laughs> Looking forward to watching. The reigning National Player of the Year and undefeated number one South Carolina on ESPN2 next. But the finish, Diamond Johnson. We talked at the beginning of the game how important her decision making and product productivity is. And it's not just her scoring, it's her assisting as well. Penetration, draw four defenders, kick at the end of the shot clock for Sanaya Rivers to hit the three. Out in transition, being able to loft the ball over to your teammate who is running the floor. And then when a post has a smaller player on or inside, the ability to deliver. Now, we talked about wins and losses and Diamond's impact on that. And their wins, two to one assist to turnover ratio, losses one to one. Today, she's been able to bring it. 10.6 assists, five rebounds for Diamond. And uh, they have taken charge here in the fourth quarter for Louisville. 0 for 7 shooting, just one solitary point in the fourth quarter. And so who do they turn to now? Chrislyn Carr will check back into the game with Van Lith now in the backcourt. John Johnson will stay out for a moment. I wonder if they'll run some of their double drag action for Carr because Haley Van Lith just, she's gotten some decent looks for herself but has struggled to get them to fall. Four of 18 shooting. Meanwhile, Carr has four three-pointers. Van Lith missed another one. Jones offensive rebound. Carr for three. Rebound Rivers. Both scorers got a touch there for Louisville, but could not find the bottom of the net. Boyd. Missed it. Scrap for the rebound. When Boyd catches the ball at the free throw line area, she's got to learn to turn and look inside because Brown Turner had Van Lith buried, but Boyd never even looked. The third foul on Cochran, and you see Haley Van Lith just the 10 points, half of her average. Been nothing a rough go of it. Nothing's been easy. You got to give NC State's defense a lot of credit for that. Back to the inbounder, Rivers. No. The foul on Boyd, slamming into Cochran, who goes down hard. That's the fourth on Jada Boyd. So she is the first into foul trouble for either side with 4.10 to go. Van Lith, good change of direction. Gives it up for Harris. 0 for 10 shooting in the fourth quarter and a foul on Louisville. Third on Morgan Jones. And when Louisville was thriving is when they were able to get things in transition. The quarter court game has not been to them so far today. Brown Turner, another good ball fake. She can't knock it down. Fortunately for Louisville, NC State isn't shooting it much better here in the fourth. Cardinals hanging around. It's a head shake in fourth quarter for Louisville. They continue to play without Diamond Johnson right now. Rivers almost lost it. Oh, good feed and a block shot inside and a foul. 
Beautiful recovery by Sanaya Rivers. She lost the handle, got it back, and just like a cool cucumber, made the pass anyway. I mean, comes in, she's got, loses the handle. That's all right, I see an open teammate, and I'm going to give him the ball. And that now is the fourth foul on Morgan Jones. Collins hits the front. Just dripping with talent. Head up, crosses over to her left, glides in and finishes. It's like the last couple of weeks have been her coming out party for NC State. She is a delight to watch play basketball. Sanaya Rivers into double digits. Well, Sanaya Rivers is a delight to talk to as well. I, I was able to catch up with her before the game, and she said, I am focused on doing the dirty work, staying focused. Coach said that she has come and gone at times during games, but six steals against Miami. He said when she is locked in and she stays focused the whole game, she has one of the highest ceilings on this team. This is a special talent and a great young lady, and as she goes, this team can go here down the stretch. She's starting to come on stronger than ever for NC State. Well, Holly, you and I cover the W. NBA when we're watching games it's, she's the one that's like wow this is the kid who is going to be a really good pro in a couple of years and until then we'll enjoy how good she is as a college player <laughs> Wilmington North Carolina and Michael Jordan country Duke a winner already today so they uh, bump a half a game in front of Notre Dame uh, Louisville a game back but in some serious trouble as NC State the defending regular season and ACC tournament champs try and hang around. Both teams have plenty of games left to make up ground against uh, the folks in front of them, including a Notre Dame-NC State showdown a week from today. Van Lith, the fade, no good. Knocked around and it goes to NC State. Nothing easy in the quarter court for NC State, nothing. Right. I'm sorry for Louisville. NC State's defense outstanding. They've allowed one point here in the fourth quarter. Mm. More. He didn't like uh, the Louisville defense blitzing Rivers. But did you see how, how unbothered she was yeah. by it? Completely unbothered. He was bothered, so he called a timeout, but she was unbothered. <laughs> Sanaya Rivers said hello to America today. I mean, it started at Lake Shot Clock throws it up, got that to fall. She excels so much when she goes in off the dribble, uses her size, athletic ability to get in, finishing right hand, left hand, and transition in the quarter court. And I've been equally as impressed with her decision making, her ball handling, her passing, her defense. Back to Brown Turner, the skip to Hayes for three. No that good. Is not a good decision. You have no. 15 seconds left in the shot clock yeah. with a 10 point lead. Hope for Louisville. Carr lost the dribble. And Van Lith 
on mm. the drive. Rivers got a hand on it, and they're going to call a foul. I thought that was really good defense by Sanaya Rivers. Again, using her length. By length, I mean, she's 6'1", but really long arms. Nice take, Van Lift going to her strong left hand. That looked like just really good deep. Boy, the NC State defense. Keep in mind, Louisville came into this game number two in the ACC in field goal percentage, number one in three-point percentage. And so far in the fourth quarter, they have scored two free throws. That's it. Give them a third. They are 0 of 13 from the floor against this Wolf Pack D. And now knowing Louisville is going to extend pressure again. Wes Moore sending in Diamond Johnson, so he has essentially two point guards on the floor, Rivers and Johnson, to handle the press. Jones jumps the passing lane, and finally they break through their first basket of the fourth quarter. And a timeout called by Wes Moore. Boy, rule number one, right Rebecca against the press, always go to the basketball, and Diamond Johnson did not right there, Morgan Jones did. Yep, absolutely. You gotta go meet the pass, but great job by Jones. Getting in the passing lane, a quick two. This, again, this game's not over. We saw it last year. Rules were reversed a little bit, where yeah. NC State had the burst in the fourth quarter, where they turned Louisville over time and time again, and able, oh, able to overcome a big deficit. Is 133 enough time to overcome seven? It is! These two teams have uh, struggled more this year than they have in recent memory. And uh, so this is a huge matchup to try and get their confidence back, turn their seasons around a little bit, heading down the back stretch. A minute and a half to go in a seven-point game. Johnson. And now Rivers. Goes baseline. Nice speed. Protect the three. Card. Triple no. Boyd boards. Jada looking for help. Van Lith almost had the steal. And it's going to be a 10 second backcourt violation. Good D for Louisville. Westmore yelling, Diamond, go help them. you got to make yourself available if you're a ball handler. And one of your non-ball handlers gets caught in a trap. Good spin to the left side, and the lid stays on the basket. Rebound, Mimi Collins. Rivers. Oh, she's tough to trap. Brown Turner wisely will work some clock. And now we've got a foul. Rivers will head to the line. What a fourth quarter for NC State defensively. Rivers 11 points, five assists, three rebounds. Westmore will call his uh, players off the line and get back to the film. Just four fourth quarter points for Louisville. That would be their lowest total of the year. And the swat from Collins sends it back and turns it over. Again, a great defensive stop by NC State. Haley Van Lith comes off the screen, and Mimi Collins knows they can only get us now with threes and steps out and blocks it. They have held Louisville to one of 16 shooting in the fourth quarter. And the bump of Diamond to the free throw line. for NC State trying to make it four in a row over Louisville. And the 
defending champs. Maybe uh, gimpy a little bit on some bum ankles, but uh, they are not done yet. A win here would keep them three games out of first place with a big showdown coming up against Notre Dame next. They still have Duke and Virginia Tech and Carolina on their schedule. Rivers with a pick. And that'll do it. Jeff Wall says don't foul. And a monster fourth quarter for NC State will seal it. 63 to 51 for the Wolfpack. Four players in double digits led by Jada Boyd. And a big defensive show led by Sanaya Rivers. improved to 15 and 5 they're 5 and 4 now in the ACC Louisville falls to 15 and 7 they are 6 and 3 in conference play